What's up guys, it's me on I am back with another video, and tonight begins the play-in to the NBA playoffs. So of course it's time to get my predictions out of the way uh with my NHL playoff predictions coming probably later in the week. Um so or later in the week, if not next week, uh depending on when the season ends. So this is gonna be an interesting playoffs, and there's plenty of narratives to go around. And we're going to get into all that as we go along. So make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on future videos and streams. Four subs away from 800. Uh, would appreciate it. And yeah, let's go ahead and let's get into this. So we, of course, have to kick things off with the playoff or the play in tournament, rather. Um, which, if you don't know what that is exactly, basically the way it works is the bottom four uh, seeds, so seven, eight, nine, and 10. Um, they battle to get the 7th and 8th seeds. Winner of 7v8 gets the 7th seed. Loser faces the winner of 9v10. Loser of 9v10 is out. And then whoever wins the matchup between the loser from 7-8 against the winner from 9-10 gets the 8th seed. And that loser is also out. So, in the East, you have the 7th seeded Miami Heat against the 8th seeded Atlanta Hawks. And the 9th seeded Toronto Raptors against the 10th seeded Chicago Bulls. And for me... I think this is pretty easy to decipher. I think the Heat will beat the Hawks. Um, for the Hawks, the, thi the thing with them is they've had a bunch of turmoil this year. Trey Young just needs to show up. I, I, I feel like if Trey Young could put on a hell of a performance, and it's not just him, you know, guys like John Collins and whatnot, but if Trey Young could put on a hell of a performance for this Hawks team in this game that get them the seventh seed, then that would be cool because Miami is not even the same team that they were just a couple of, you know, literally since the bubble year in 2020, they, they're just getting older. You know, Kyle Lowry is probably done. Um, I think Jimmy Butler could be getting frustrated. Who knows? Um, I don't know, but I think Miami is just the safe pick here. So I think they will retain the seventh seed. Um, and then in the 9v10 game, I'm taking the Raptors to get it done. As much as I like Chicago to win, sorry, Rusty Buckets. Sorry, Kenny. Um, I, what the hell happened to Chicago, man? We were looking at this team like they had a, like they had a chance to, to do something literally like what, a year or two ago? You know, you have Levine, you have DeMar, you have Vucevic, you had Lonzo before he got hurt, and who knows if he's ever going to play again. And now people are looking at this team like, oh, you need to blow it up and rebuild. Like, that's how bad it's gotten in Chicago. And it's insane. <sighs> so I think it's going to be Toronto versus Atlanta for the eighth seed. Um, and give me Toronto. Um, I think in some ways Toronto, uh, Toronto needs to get in the playoffs. Um, to have to have something go right for them in a year where again they're another team who has fallen off and it does it make sense why what happened to Van Vliet I I think Siakam is still good OG Ananobi should still be good just what happened you know I, I mean yes I know Kawhi left after they won the title and we kind of figured that was gonna happen but like holy hell anyway. On the west side, you have the seven-seeded Laker, Lakers against the eight-seeded Timberwolves and the ninth-seeded Pelicans against the tenth-seeded Thunder. Of course, Dallas's turmoil knocked them out of the playoffs and out of the play-in uh, late in the season, which is insane to think about considering where they were when they got Kyrie. And I don't blame Kyrie for everything that's going on in Dallas. Um, I, there's a lot going on over there. Uh, you got to get rid of Jason Kidd, just saying. But Shout out to the Thunder. This is, we were looking at this team as like the ultimate tank team over the 76ers from a handful of years ago because the, the, the Thunder just kept making trades and have a shitload of picks for the next several years. And they're already in the playoffs. I get it's the play in and I get that they're the 10th seed and they're 40 and 42, but who cares? You're here. You have a chance. It's crazy to think about. Now, 
another thing that's crazy to think about is the Lakers. Y'all started this season complete shit. And just the narratives and everything. It, we thought this team was done. And then, you know, and then one of the biggest things that people have been talking about is that this team has been one of the best teams in the West since the trade deadline, since they got rid of Westbrook, since they, they brought in D'Angelo Russell, they made all these other moves. How much will it translate to the playoffs? Well, for starters, you're beating the Timberwolves because the Timberwolves are without Rudy Gobert, who that trade is getting worse and worse by the day. They're without McDaniels, who punched a wall in the same game that Gobert got thrown out by his own team for punching Kyle Anderson. Jesus Christ, Minnesota, what the fuck? You're really going to waste Cat and Anthony Edwards. You're wasting two more star players. You guys cannot have shit. So, Lakers retain the seventh seed as much as I hate to say it. Um, and then for the Pelicans and the Thunder, I think this game could go either way. Um, Pelicans are obviously a team that we've been talking about as, well, you know, once you have a healthy Zion, once you have healthy Zion, this team's going to explode and they're going to be one of the best teams in the league. And I still think they can be. But the narratives with them is, do you just trade Williamson now and recoup a bunch of assets because somebody's going to be willing to pay for him you know and but also risk him turning into a star once he's healthy elsewhere or do you keep him and hope for the best i don't know what you do could the thunder beat the pelicans here possibly but i think the pelicans can get it done and they will get it done it's gonna be close I think Shea Gildas Alexander is going to put on a hell of a show. But I think the Pelicans will get it done against the Thunder. And I also believe the Pelicans will get it done against the Timberwolves, knocking the Timberwolves out and putting the Pelicans into the eighth seed. So, with that being said, we now get into the main bracket. So, we're starting off in the East with the top seeded Bucks against the eighth seeded Raptors. What's crazy is that this was a matchup we would have expected to see later in the playoffs, not in the first round. It is crazy how far Toronto has fallen. Um, I think Milwaukee should have this series in five. Um, shouldn't be an issue. Then we have the Cavaliers and the Knicks. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. Julius Randle has rebounded. The Knicks Again, Dallas fumbling Jalen Brunson is probably one of the more underrated moves of the offseason. Maybe not so underrated, but considering Mark Cuban's recent comment saying that Brunson's father got involved and he was the one that spurned the Mavs into from keeping Jalen and led Jalen to go to the Knicks. I mean, what can you do? But at the same time, we looked at how much the Knicks were paying Jalen, and we're like, uh, what are you doing? Turns out, he was he was what helped make Dallas good alongside, Jay, alongside Luka, and now he's made the Knicks good, and that's insane to me. Um, and of course, with the Cavaliers, they made the big move for Donovan Mitchell, so I think both teams have something to prove. Oh my god, th this... I think this could go seven. I think it could. Who do I think wins, though? Mm. Mm. Bold prediction? Knicks in seven. You want to know why? Because the Cavaliers need to be consistent. I, I've, had some, I've had some friends on my Twitter timeline who are Cavs fans, and I have seen them talk before about how this team isn't always consistent. Um, and that could come back to bite them. Donovan Mitchell could put up all the great performances he wants, but he cannot be the only guy, you know, running the show in Cleveland. So I think the Knicks could win in seven. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But Knicks in seven. How crazy would that be? Give it to me. Knicks in seven. Then we have the 76ers and the Nets. After everything that has happened with Brooklyn this year, they're still... Still here, and they're not even in the play-in. That's crazy. However, I mean, if we're being honest, Sixers and five. 
Um, maybe six, but six isn't five. Um, and there's no real way around it. The Nets are a good young team now with KD gone and with Kyrie gone, but I think inevitably the Sixers should have no problem handling them. Uh, and if they do, oh boy. And then finally, Celtics against the Heat. Um, again, th this is a matchup that, like, what, was like a second round conference finals matchup, like, what, last year, year before, something like that? Celtics, I, I'm going to say Celtics in six, but that's being generous. I want to say Celtics in five, but I think the Heat could probably pull a game or two out of their ass. So I'm going to say Celtics in six, but I want to say Celtics in five. So in my heart, I'm saying Celtics in five, but in my mind, I'm saying Celtics in six. Just roll with it. Anyway, on the West side, we have the Nuggets as the top seed against the Pelicans. And this is one of the, like, the West has a lot of different narratives going for it. You look at the Nuggets and all the MVP talk, Jokic potentially winning his third in a row. And all the Kendrick Perkins bullshit that's been going on and all this other stuff. The Nuggets have a lot to prove. And a few of these teams do. I mean, you look at, again, the Nuggets. The Suns have KD now. And if you're not going to freaking make the finals and win, what do you, like, at that point, what do you do? Clippers need to do something and they have to deal with the Suns. Uh, and then the Grizzlies with all the John Morant stuff. But getting back to Nuggets Pelicans. I think the Pelicans will hold their own. I don't want to say Pelicans at five. It really depends on if you can get Zion, Zion Williamson back or not. But I think... Fuck, I'm going to have to say it. Nuggets in five. I don't want to say Nuggets in five. I want to say the Pelicans can win two of them. But without Zion, that's going to be kind of hard. So give me Nuggets in five on that one. Then we get to the Suns and Clippers, and as I just stated, the Suns have KD now. They have KD, Booker, Aiton, and CP3. This is the, you have to get it done. You have to get it done. You have got to win. You've got to get CP3 a ring. You have to get Booker and Aiton a ring. And you have to get KD a ring that hopefully fans will fucking respect, considering people don't really respect his two Warriors rings, whether you'll, whether anybody likes it or not. For the Clippers, on the other hand, first of all, you need Paul George to be healthy, and that's not looking very likely right now. And second, if you get knocked out early again, what do the Clippers do? Because again, because Paul George and Kawhi have had injury issues. Then, you know, and then there's the load management conversation. And I just don't know where the Clippers go from here if you don't get it done. And I don't think they're winning either. I, I don't think we see the Suns get eliminated early like we did get with them against the Mavericks last year. Suns and six. Give me the Suns and six. Could say five. Give me them in six. Then we have the fun matchup. The Sacramento Kings, the third seeded Sacramento Kings, breaking their playoff drought against the, <clears throat> let me activate my Paul Heyman voice, the reigning defending undisputed NBA champions of the world, the Golden State Warriors, the sixth seeded Golden State Warriors, who have been shit on the road. Who has home court advantage? The Kings. Oh boy. Now, to be fair, yes, the Warriors do still have Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond, they got some other guys too, but the Kings are such a fun team, man. It, I, I, like of all the teams, I, I will admit, Sacramento is probably the most likely to get first rounded. Maybe they're a fraud third seed. I don't know, but Jesus Christ, they're this is a this is a magical one for them. The fact that they're even here, not even just that they like. You could say, okay, maybe they would have made the playoffs maybe as a play-in team, maybe as a sixth or a seventh or an eighth. Da, da, da. No, they're the third seed. That's so, that's insane. I want to see them beat the Warriors so bad. So bad. I really do. 
I really, really do. <sighs> and this is going to have to be my bold prediction. If we're sticking to the narrative that the Warriors have had a hard time playing on the road, which they have this year. Look at their record. Look at their record on the road. It has been shit this year, which is weird as hell. If we're sticking to that narrative, I think the Kings win in seven. But I wouldn't be surprised if they get first round. So I'm going to say my other bold prediction for the first round. The first one was the Knicks win. The second one being the Kings dethrone the Warriors. But with the asterisk of, I wouldn't be surprised if the Warriors did win. But give me the Kings in seven. I, I just, I want to see it. I want to see it. it. It's it's not 1v8 material, because that's not the seeding here. But it would still be so much fun. It really would be. And then finally, the second seeded Grizzlies against the seventh seeded Lakers. And as I mentioned before, a lot of people have been talking about how the Lakers have been the best team since the trade deadline. This team has undergone a massive shift since then. Here's your problem. You need LeBron and AD, specifically AD, to stay healthy. The stuff that Austin Reeves has been pulling off has been awesome, but it's not sustainable. D'Angelo Russell has been a great addition, you know, a re-addition to the team, actually, considering he started with the Lakers. And then when you look at the Grizzlies, yes, you have Ja, yes, you have Jalen, uh, Jalen Jackson. Jaren, actually, sorry, Jaren Jackson, my bad. But considering Morant's comments earlier in the year about the West and his off-court shenanigans, honestly, I think the Grizzlies, if the Kings are the most likely team to get first-rounded, the Grizzlies are right behind them, honest to God, because, I mean, come on. It, it, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So... Bold prediction number three? Fuck it. Lakers in seven. Why not? LeBron decides to... LeBron puts Ja Morant in his place. I can see it. For all the comments Ja's made this year and all of his shenanigans off the court, I could very well see the Grizzlies getting knocked out in round one. I don't want them. I don't want them to. I want them to advance. I want them to beat the Lakers because as a Celtics fan, I don't like the Lakers. But... I will give credit where credit is due. Give me the Lakers in seven on this one. So, with that said, we have the top seeded Bucks against the fifth seeded Knicks, the second seeded Celtics against the third seeded 76ers, the top seeded Nuggets against the fourth seeded Suns, and the third seeded Kings against the seventh seeded Lakers. So, Bucks Knicks. Um, Knicks will not get the same magic against the Bucks that they did against the Cavs. Uh, I will still say Bucks in six because I think the Knicks will give them a challenge, but Bucks advance. And then Celtic 76ers once again. Ah, yes. Celtics in six because the Celtics often tend to be the kryptonite of the 76ers. So that means we get Bucks Celtics in the conference finals once again. On the west side, Nuggets Suns. I said it before, the Suns have to get to the finals. They have to win this year. They fucking have to. You've got four top players on your roster. You have to get it done. I'm sorry, Jokic. I'm sorry, Denver. I hate to do this to you. Give me the Suns in six to knock out the one seed and get back to the conference finals. And then. Kings versus Lakers. Oh my god. This is going to be fun. Again, the 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 dream team, I guess, the, the dream run for the Kings against LeBron James and the Lakers. <sighs> oh my god, I hate to do this to the Kings, man. I really do. But give me the Lakers in six. Urgh, I hate doing that. I, I hate it. I hate it. But I just think, again, Lakers have been the best team since the trade deadline. It's hard to deny it. 
I want to talk my shit all I want, but I have again, I have to give credit where credit's due. I have to. I just do. A lot of people have been saying the Lakers can make a finals run. It's hard to argue against it right now. Unless they show me otherwise. I think the Lakers are headed back to the conference finals. Which means Bucks, Celtics, Suns, Lakers. Oh boy. So, in the East, Bucks, Celtics. This is going to be a seven game war, as it should be. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. It, bro, imagine if we get Dom 2K and Tom Grossi both attending a box game, either in Boston or uh, one of these games, either in Boston or Milwaukee. Um, being that Grossi's a, a Bucks fan and Dom's a Celtics fan, who will cosplay as a fan from another team against the Celtics, just to curse them because Dom curse shenanigans. That w- and imagine if they meet up. Now that would be fucking cool. It would be. Who do I think wins, though? Well, if I'm being honest, I have to go with my Celtics. I want to see them get back to the finals. Um, Give me the Celtics in seven, man. Just give it to me. And as long as they have a chance, I've got them. So then that goes to the west side. Suns versus Lakers. This, the matchup that I think LeBron really wants. Not only are you facing Kevin Durant, but you're also facing the team that handed you your ass in the first round for the first time in your career. You have a shot at revenge. However, the Suns will get the better of you once again. Give me the Suns in six. Because again, Four top players. And even if CP3 is aging out, I don't care. You still have KD. You still have Aiden. You still have Booker. These Suns must get it done. So, Suns and Sex. Therefore, your finals matchup for the 2023 NBA playoffs will be the Boston Celtics against the Phoenix Suns. And I could have swore I predicted this last year. And it didn't happen. But I'm predicting it this year because I just want to see it happen. I really do. And and hell, this is a matchup we've seen in the finals before a long fucking time ago. But it's happened. Who do I think wins? I'm sorry, Boston. I hate to do this to you. I want you to win. But as a fan of the game, I want to see CP3 finally get a ring. I want to see... I, I do. I really do. I want... He could retire right afterward, honestly. I said this last year, and I'll say it again. He could retire right afterward, if he wanted to. Once he has a ring, just call it a career, man. And I think they'll get it done. You finally got rid of Robert Sarver as your owner. Um, So, that curse is lifted off your back. Thank God. And I think, as a result... You get it done. Suns in seven. Finals MVP prediction? Who else? Kevin Durant. Catch y'all next time. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know your predictions down below. Peace.